Praise God. Today, I want to challenge us again. And I've titled this, I could have given this two titles. Uh, one was, Whose Report Are You Going to Believe? Or the other one I could have titled with, but both work, is Holding On to the Word of God. You know, holding on to God's Word. And, you know, we live in a world today where there's a whole lot of contrary reports, contrary views, contrary truths that everybody's proclaiming. Amen. You know, we can look in the last 18 months and you see the government is telling you they have the truth. Big tech is telling you they have the truth. You know, the scientists are telling you they have the truth. Joe Bob round the corner is telling you he has the truth. You know, everybody is claiming that they have the truth. And, you know, the crazy thing is we live in a, a society now where uh, people are deciding what's truth and then censoring anybody else who has a different view. And uh, that's not a good thing. It's, it's not a good thing when somebody can decide that they have the truth, especially governments. You know, the last people you want, if, if we look at history, to, to control and say what the truth is and what the truth isn't, is government. You know, you want them, look, you, you administrate the nation, you leave truth alone. Amen. But we see that we're living in a society where more and more, uh, for us as the church, we are going to see the battle of the living God, or, or the warfare of the truth of the living God, be confronted by the gods of science and so on and so forth. Everybody's going to be claiming they have a truth, and we're going to see that we are going to be confronted with that. And we need to know what we believe. Uh, I was looking, a pastor I follow in the States, he had a message, he, he screenshotted it on his YouTube. And he was told that YouTube has decided anything about prayer for COVID or anything like that, they will now ban the video and they will delete the account. So that just shows you that even just saying we're going to pray for you if you've got COVID or this or that will get you removed off of YouTube. And stuff like that. So that's, where, that's basically where things are going. That more and more, the things of the Spirit, the, 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 you know, the things that are contrary to the narrative that is being pushed, will be more and more sidelined, suppressed, removed, deleted. And we need to know where we stand. You know, as Christians, you know, we believe in the Lord Jesus. We believe in the Bible. We believe that the Bible is the Word of God. We believe that the Bible is infallible. Now, what does infallible mean? You know, if I say to you, the Bible is infallible, what is the picture that comes to your mind? It's perfect. We believe the Scriptures are perfect. We believe the Scriptures don't make mistakes. And so, my question to us is, whose report do you believe? Do you believe the Word of God, that is truth, or are you believing something else? Do you really believe the Scriptures? And that is something, you know, each and every one of us needs to ask ourselves. I'm, I can put it out there, but what you do with that is up to you. You know, how many times have you heard people say, I know the Bible says that, but... You know, how many times have you heard people say that? I've heard it many times. People say, I've heard, I know the Bible says that. I know that God's word says that, but. And, and usually when there's a but there, they're saying, well, there's something else that in their mind trumps what the word of God says. And, you know, you'll say, but I know the Bible says that. And then they'll say, well, you know, but the government says this or science says that. Or, you know, the one you get is my experience is uh, I've, I haven't experienced that. So I know the Bible says that, but I haven't experienced that. Or the other thing that you've heard many uh, times is, Sister so-and-so believed the Bible. You know, I know the Bible says that Sister so-and-so believed that, and she died. You know? And so we take people's experiences, and, or, or even our own personal experiences, and want to elevate it or put it against what the Word of God says. And so we need to be careful of that we have sometimes people say well i know the word of god says that but 
You've got to use wisdom. You know, that's a classic one. Now, my, my question is, well, what wisdom? You know, if you're faced with a situation and you, you're dealing with something, what wisdom are you going to use? Now, if you use God's wisdom, that's great. But if you use the world's wisdom instead of what God's word says, that's a problem. Uh, the the uh, Apostle James, he said that the wisdom of this world is firstly earthly. It is of this earth. He said then it is sensual. It is, and that's not sex. It's of the senses. The wisdom of this world is of the senses. And then he said the wisdom of this world is demonic. So that is what the scripture declares about the wisdom of this world. And so we need to take a look and consider what wisdom we are drawing from. What well are you and I drinking from? Are we drinking from God's well or are we drinking from the things of this world? What is governing? What is shaping how we see what God is doing? How, what governs our worldview? Does the Word of God govern our worldview or does something else govern our worldview? And this is very important. This is very important for victorious Christian living. Are we led by the Spirit of God or are we directed and, and prodded and pushed by the things of this world? Amen. Jesus, we know, is the only truth. He is the Word of God made flesh. And we know Jesus himself said, I am the way. I am the truth. I am the life. And then in John 17, as he was praying to the Father, he said, sanctify them by your truth. Just to confirm it again, he said, your word is truth. There is only one truth. An example we see creeping into the church, but it's, it's very blatant. I know Keith has mentioned it, but this would be a wisdom of the world. They'll say, oh, well, you're all individuals, right? You've all had your own experiences and everything like that. So all of you must have your own truth. That is a doctrine of demons that is creeping into the church. Everybody has their own truth. No, you don't. That's a lie. There's only one truth, the Word of God. Nobody, you can have your own experiences and stuff like that. doesn't mean it's the truth, you know. And so that is important for us to know. There is only one truth. There is only one reality, and that is the reality of God's Word. And we need to be a people who makes the decision whether we believe that or not. Do you believe that the Scripture is the Word of God? You know, there are, there are some who believe that this is all just an allegory. It's all just poetry. You know, it, it was written by men. You know, maybe wise and spiritual men. But they don't believe that this is the Word of God. And so, my question again is, what do you believe? What do you believe about this word? Isaiah 53 and verse 1. And this is one of the scriptures that again, just again, I'm going to maybe repeat myself, but I'll say it again. Isaiah 53 and verse 1. Who has believed our report and to whom has the arm of the Lord been revealed? And that is my question. And maybe I'll ask it a few times. Whose report do you believe? Do you believe God's report or do you believe the world's report? Amen. Do you know what you believe? Do you know what you believe? You know, when, when we look at unbelief, you know, and, and I'm going to focus on that. Unbelief, right, is not the lack of belief. How many know that you believe something? But when, when you're in unbelief, you're believing something else instead of God's word. We are created to believe. You believe something. Even if it's the opposite of God's word, you believe something. But unbelief is not the absence of belief. Unbelief is you have, are believing something else instead of God's word. And so that is important to know. Amen. So, when we look at how we respond to God's word, I want us to 
in ourselves whenever we do it, or even now, as we're sitting here, or even at home. I want us to consider making a quality decision to put God's Word first place in our lives. To make God's Word the final authority of our lives. Right? So that when you're faced with whatever situation you're dealing with, you can respond and say, what does God's Word say about this? I know science says this. I know the government says that. I know Sister Dudat says that. But what does the Bible say about the situation? And so we make the Word of God our final authority. The, the Word of God is totally relevant to every single area of our lives. The Scriptures are totally relevant to every area of our lives. Amen? And so we need to be settled that whenever we are faced with a thing, because you'll get people who say, well, the science says this. They'll say, well, the science says that. The science has been settled. And how many people know two weeks later uh, the science has changed? And then they're going, oh, well, it, the science is still settled, you know. But then another week later it's changed again. And so we know that the science is, well, according to them, settled, but uh, it always seems to change. You know, and, and I, I, I'm tempted to go to Corona, but I won't. Uh, let's use eggs, for example. Science has told you, you eat one egg and you're going to drop dead of a heart attack, right? And then a couple of months later, no, you can eat three, four eggs a week and then it's all right. Then a couple of months later, no, you eat one more egg and you'll, you'll die. You know, and then weeks later, no, you can eat as many eggs as you want all the time, and it's okay, it's good for you, and everything like that. And then somebody else will come out, no, 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 don't do that, you'll kill yourself. And then, you know, it's always chopping and changing. That's the science. Uh, I eat as many eggs as I want, I love eggs. But that just shows you that the science is not settled. You know, they're always finding something out, and then they're finding the exact opposite <laughs> again, so I don't know how. Uh, they, they do it, but when it comes to certain things, the only thing we can rely on and trust in is the Word of God. And, you know, when it comes to the science, you know, obviously God, most, when science was in, invented or put into practice, most of the people who put science into practice in the 1500s and 1600s were all believers. You know, a lot of these guys, uh, when they did the scientific method and stuff like that, did it from the mindset that there is a God and there is a Creator. Uh, modern science now wants to totally remove the idea or even the, the thought that there might be a Creator in, in the mix. And so, if science agrees with the Word of God, I agree with science. If it disagrees with the Word of God, I choose the Word of God every single time. Amen? You can tell me the, the climate, we're all going to die and dry up and everything like that. I know as the scripture declares, as long as the earth remains, he told us in Genesis after the flood, there would be seasons of heat, there would be seasons of dry, there'd be seasons of cold, there'd be seasons of wet. The earth has cycles and seasons. The climate is always changing. But I know that until he's done, this earth will remain. And so I'm not worried about, you know, drying up or climate emergency and everything. As far as I'm concerned, in my opinion, it's a lot of nonsense. Uh, you know, and so that's, that's how I see it. I will touch one little thing, because I'm going to be naughty. Uh, but there's an interesting scripture in Revelation 18 and 23. And uh, it talks about the fact that in the last days, the whole world is deceived by sorcery. The whole world is deceived by sorcery. And the Greek word there is an interesting word. It's the word pharmakia. It says the whole world in the last days is deceived by pharmakia. And uh, we know that's the word we get, pharmacy, pharmaceuticals, this, that, the other. And I found it very interesting that in the last days, the whole world will be deceived, if we use the Greek, by pharmakia. Now, I won't say anything else about that, but very, very interesting. Very, very, very interesting. Amen. Psalm 119. 
I want us to look at what the Bible says about the integrity of God's word. Psalm 119, verse 89. Forever, O Lord, your word is settled in heaven. For how long? Just for a period of time? No, forever. Forever. And then he says in verse 90, Your faithfulness endures to all generations. So who do the scriptures apply to? Who does the truth of God's word apply to? It applies to all generations. You establish the earth and it abides. Just what we've been talking about. It continues to this day according to your ordinances for all are your servants. And so one of the things there we need to see that God's word with God is forever settled. And so it should be forever settled with us when it comes to what we believe and what we stand on. Amen. Matthew 24 and 35. I'll just read that one. Jesus said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my word will by no means pass away. And so we see again the unchangeableness, the eternalness of God's word. 2 Timothy 3.16 says there, all scripture is uh, given by the inspiration of God. I love the way the King James says it. All scripture is God breathed. I think that is so, I don't know, it just sounds so awesome. You know, when you just hear all scripture is God breathed. And uh, so we see there that he's not saying this was written by men. It was penned by men. But it was given by God. Holy men of old, the scripture declares, were, uh, wrote this scripture down as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. They were inspired by the Holy Scripture to pen this, uh, this book. Amen. So how do we respond to the Word of God? How, you know, we, okay, we've determined, we've decided, this is the Word of God. This is infallible. This is the perfect will of God. How do we respond to it? What do we do with it? Again, let's go back to Psalm 119. Psalm 119 and verse 11. He says there, Your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. So our response to knowing that this is the truth, to knowing that this is the word of God, is to take this word and hide it in our hearts. Put it before our eyes, put it before our ears, speak it with our lips and hide it in our hearts. And then it says there, so that we do not sin against God. Amen. And again, coming back to the unbelief, Hebrews 3. Hebrews chapter 3. And verse 12. He says there, Beware, brethren. Who is he talking to? He's talking to the church. He's talking to the brothers and the Lord. He's not talking to unbelievers yet. He's talking to the body. He says, Beware, brethren. Beware, brothers. Lest there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living God. And that can sometimes be, you know, that's a quite a hard word. An evil heart of unbelief. God considers the heart that does not believe an evil heart. That is pretty harsh. 
but he said it. But I want us to again look at that. We hide the word of God in our hearts so that we believe the truth, right? We hide the word of God. We just read Psalm 119 verse 11. Your word I have hidden in my heart so that I do not sin against you. And obviously we know the, you know, the do not steal, the do not kill, the do not commit adultery. But what about the sin of unbelief and things like that? Hiding the word of God in your heart will cause you to have your belief right before God. Does that make sense? Your believing will be right before God. And it will protect you from unbelief. It will protect you from having unbelief in your heart. And as I said, unbelief is not the absence of belief. Unbelief is simply believing something else above or instead of God's word and God's truth. That's unbelief. You choose to believe something. That's why I said, I know the Bible says this, but whatever you say afterwards, you are elevating above the word of God. And so... When we do do that, and if you catch yourself doing that, maybe you need to stop, just go back and examine what you believe. Even if you do it in stuff, and maybe you're talking to the Lord, and you say, Lord, I know the Bible says this, but you know, you know, whatever excuse you want to make, and, and so on and so forth. You need to stop and see what, how you are responding to God. Because I've done it. I've done it and I say, oh Lord, I know you say this, and everything like that, but, you know, whatever your but is, you are, you are basically competing with God's word. You are elevating it to a place of authority against the authority of God's word in your own life. And so we need to be aware of that. We need to just be guarded about how we believe, what we think. You know, if you are in conversations, what comes out of your mouth? Because ultimately, what you believe, you will hear it when you speak. If you want to hear your opinion on something or what you believe on something, just talk about it for a while. You'll know exactly what you believe about that situation. Amen. So, hold on to the Word of God. We as Christians know that God's Word is integrity. We know it is integrous, that it is true. And so you need to hold on to it. You need to hold on to Jesus. You need to hold on to Father God. Hold on to Him. And you might say, well, Mike, you know what? I've had disappointments. I've had setbacks. You know, I, I, f I feel like I, I want to, but I can't. You know, I've messed up in this area so many times, and it just seems like I keep messing up in the same area. Or whatever the reason may be, you've got a hurt or a disappointment or a discouragement. That is exactly why you hold on to the Lord. That is exactly why you hold on to Jesus. He is your Savior. You're not your own Savior. Adam and Eve, when they sinned, they went and hid. What is our response when we sin? You run to Jesus. You cling to Jesus. He is your Savior. He is your Lord. So when, if you're going to fall, as, as one pastor used to say, he said, fall towards Jesus. You know, run towards Jesus. If you are discouraged... Hold on to God. Don't isolate yourself. The book of Proverbs warns us, the man who isolates himself seeks his own thing. You know, sometimes when you're discouraged and things like that, turn to God. Don't turn inwards. Turn to Him. You know? Uh, you, it, it's, it's things like that. If you know somebody you trust, you can talk to, who's uh, a brother in the Lord or a sister in the Lord who can help you, go speak to them. You know? But God has a way for you. He has a hope for you. Amen. It doesn't matter what you've experienced. You hold on to God. You hold on to the truth of His Word. Because as He has said, heaven and earth might pass away or will pass away, but my Word will stand forever. And I want us to, uh, again, look at it from this point of view. God is the source of your life. He is the source of all life. And so we need to hold on to Him as the source of our life. Jeremiah 29, 11. I know this, this verse has been so used that we just lose the, you know, sometimes the impact of it. 
Uh, it's, it's something, uh, even myself, you know, you've heard it so many times, you just switch off as soon as you hear Jeremiah 29, 11. And that's not good. Uh, all of the promises of God in Christ are yea and amen. All of the promises. So Jeremiah 29, 11, he says, For I know, God knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. Amen. He knows the thoughts that he thinks towards you. He thinks thoughts of peace, not of evil, to give you a future and a hope. God has a destiny for each and every one of us. Amen. We know from, uh, even from Jeremiah chapter 1, you know, before I formed you in, the, in your mother's womb, I knew you. And before you were born, I set you apart and I ordained you with a purpose and a calling. That is who God, when God sees you, he sees a destiny. Amen. There's, as I've said it before, I'll say it again. There's no such thing as a nobody in the kingdom of God. There's no such thing. I'm just a little nobody. No, you're not. God knows you. God knows you. And God knows the destiny he has for you. Amen. God wants you to succeed and prosper. God wants you to succeed and prosper. And obviously when I talk about prosper, prosper and I talk about prosperity I'm not just talking money right I'm talking in every arena and area of your life God wants you to prosper Psalm 35 and verse 27 says God's delight his pleasure is in the prosperity of his servants amen and I want you again just to take a look at how you respond to everyday living how many of you know your job is not your source? Right? Your job is not your source. God is your source. He is the God who supplies. Now your job may be an avenue of your supply. Right? But you, need, you and I need to see that God is the source of everything for us. Your job is just an avenue of supply. We thank God for our jobs. We, we are blessed to have the jobs we have. Or, you know, and if you believe in for a job... Father, we just thank you for that door to open for a good job in Jesus' name. But whatever way your income comes to you, that is just an avenue. And we as people need to see it as oh, believers, people, children of God, whatever you want to say. We need to see that merely as an avenue, but that God is my supply. God is my provision. Amen. He is the God who gives you bread for food and seed to sow. Right? He is the God who supplies your everything. Amen. And we can have faith in God for our health and our healing. Right? Exodus 23 and 25. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and He will bless your bread and your water. And He says, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Amen. Health and healing comes from God. Amen. Psalm 103. Thank you, Lord. Psalm 103. Okay, let's read from verse 2. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. Hallelujah. God has benefits. There's benefits in being a child of God. Are we aware of that? You know? Are you aware of the benefits of being a child of God? And then it says there, who forgives all of your iniquities, who heals all of your diseases, who redeems your life from destruction, who crowns you with loving kindness and tender mercies, who satisfies your mouth with good things so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. God is the source of your healing. He is the source of your health. He is the source of your life. Amen. Proverbs chapter 4. And verse 20. He says, My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear. Don't just listen with a shallow listening. He says, listen, pay attention. 
Hey, hear, hear what I'm saying to you. He says there, do not let them depart from your eyes. Keep them. You've got to hold on to it. Keep it in the midst of your heart. And many times there will be things that come against us that want us to let go of the word of God from our heart. And so he says, you've got to keep it. You've got to hold it. Hold it. For they are life to those who find them and health to all their flesh. Amen. That is an awesome promise that we can hold on to. Amen. You say, well, I've, I've struggled with something for a, for a long time. Well, don't quit. Make, it, make, a, make a decision. Make a quality decision. You believe God's word. Become fully persuaded. Say, if I have to stand for two days, if I have to stand for two months, if I have to stand for two years, if I have to stand for 20 years, I'm not changing my belief in God's word. If I have to stand for eternity, I will not change what I believe about God's word because he is faithful and true. I know one pastor uh, who said, he's, uh, I, loved, I loved the comment, he just said, if you're willing to stand forever, you won't have to stand for long. And so make that determination that you will stand forever, if necessary, on the word of God. Amen. And so, when it comes to health and healing, now I want to say something, and please hear me here. Don't put your faith in medicine. Don't put your faith in a vaccine. Right? Now, and hear what I'm saying. If, if, if you've got the vaccine, praise God. You know, believe that it's going to work with you. It's going to do what it's going to do. Right? But believe that your healing, that your protection is, and, and your health and your security is in God. Not in something that was stuck in your arm. Right? Now, I'm not against doctors. If you need to go to a doctor, play, praise God, go to a doctor. You know, get medicine, this, that, the other. But... I am saying that you settle it in your heart that even if you do those things, right, God is still the source of your health. He is the source of your life. He is the source of your healing, right? And so just settle it in your heart that that, that is where your faith is, in God. So even if you got the, uh, uh, an infection and you're taking antibiotics, for example, right, just say, thank you, Father. Thank you that you are healing me. I receive these antibiotics. I thank you for what they do. But ultimately, Father, I know that you are the source of my healing. You are the source of my life. Give glory to God, right? Not to a capsule, right? That is how we as believers should respond. We give glory to God for every good thing that comes to us in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. And so that is what I want us to just settle our hearts on today is that in everything, we trust God. In everything, we give Him the glory. In everything, we make His word the final authority. You say, but what about this? What about this and that? Or what about what so-and-so said? I say, have faith in God. But what about the economy? Or what about the government? Or what about, you know, the future? Have faith in God. Have faith in God that He will hold you. He will keep you. He, will, he says that there is nothing that will snatch you out of his hand. So have faith in God. Amen. Amen. So we make that commitment, make that quality decision that God's word is first place. God's word is final authority. You say, well, people might not find that uh, very pop You might find that it's not very popular that people might say you're a bit of a loon or uh, an extremist or everything like that, take it as a compliment. Amen? We should be radical, extreme, non-conformist for Jesus. Amen? These days, uh, you know, when you hear things like that, it's almost like you shy away from it. But we should be on fire for God. We should be extreme for Jesus. We should be radical for our Lord. Right? It doesn't, just because the world has a picture of what they think radical and extreme and all that is, right? Doesn't mean we shy away from being that. Amen. And, you know, as Keith said, 
what, what our brothers and sisters are facing in Afghanistan and, and, and other nations, you know, is, is nothing. Or at least what we experience is nothing compared to that. So when people look at you skew, or when they delete you off of friends from Facebook, oh, shame, you know, and things like that, you know, oh, I'm being terribly persecuted, or they say bad things about you, you are facing nothing compared to what some people are facing in the world of persecution, right? And, and so all I'm saying is that we as, we as believers need to be fully persuaded. We need to have backbone, right? No, no jellyfish spines. Backbone, believe what the Word of God says and not be shy to declare the truth of God's Word. Amen. Amen. Get anything? Any questions? Anything anybody wants to share? Amen. Well, praise God. Father, we thank you that your word is true. Father, it is eternal. Father, we thank you for the great privilege that as your children, you give us uh, not only access to your word, but Father, you give us your word to use. Father, you said that, uh, that when you speak your word, that, Father, it goes and it does the purpose for which you've sent it, Father, and it will accomplish the thing that you have purposed. And, Father, then you say to us that we should speak your word. And so, Father, we thank you that we have an authority in speaking your word. We have an authority in the name of Jesus to declare your truth and to see lives touched, to see our own lives transformed by the power of your word. We thank you, Father, that, Lord, you will help us to recognize if we are compromising in any way, Father, the truth of your word. If there's anything where we are feeling pressured to compromise the truth of your word, Father, I just thank you, Lord, that you would provoke within us, Father, uh, uh, so that we, we recognize it first and foremost, and Father, that by your grace, we make a decision, a good decision, to stand for your word. As you said, Father, a, a, a man, a, a good man, will, will swear to his own hurt and he won't change. And so, Father, we want to be a people that will stay uh, fixed on your word, that, Father, we will declare your word and we won't change. We won't be swayed from your word, no matter the cost, in Jesus' name. And so, we just thank you for that today, in Jesus' name. Bless this week. We thank you, Father, for a good week for everybody. Father, we thank you for opportunities. We thank you for growth. We thank you for moving forward, Father, into new things. Father, we just thank you for open doors and opportunities. We thank you, Father, for opportunities to possibly share our faith with somebody, Father, to witness, to be able to pray. Maybe there's somebody who needs healing, and we're just in the right place.